I recently issued a special report on the lack of uh, capacity in the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Natural Resources and that, how that's restricting them from fulfilling their mandate. Uh, in support of that argument, I did a number of case studies that each, in turn, uh, argues to the capacity problems. And these video blogs are on those case studies. Uh, the topic of this one is it's about enforcing the game of fish laws by conservation officers. Conservation officers are people who work for the Ministry of Natural Resources. These are the so-called game wardens, we used to call them at one time. Uh, but they're much more than that. And these are the men and women who, who uh, administer a number of fish and wildlife laws and other laws. You know, the other guns that go out and visit the recreational fishermen and hunters and check their licenses and make sure that they're complying with the game and fish laws. But they do more than that. They also administer the, the Public Lands Act to make sure the, the lands are respected and things, things aren't dumped, things aren't abused, that sort of thing. They also uh, check for boating safety when they're out doing their, their fishing service, for instance, and make sure that, that that's respected. And then they have other duties that have been more recently added. Uh, we, of course, have huge problems with invasive species in, in Ontario, especially in the Great Lakes. And one of the things that's in recent years has come up is uh, we used to Im allow the importation of live Asian carp for sale in fish markets, primarily in Toronto. Well, those live Asian carp posed a huge problem, a huge risk of, of uh, becoming invasive species if they were ever released. Uh, and so we banned the sale of live, live Asian carp, and, or any fish for that matter. Uh, and who enforces that ban? Well, the conservation officers. So that that's gives an example of how it takes them into, into fish markets now. It's an area of responsibility. Uh, for another example of something a little less, uh, more unusual, I guess, is the fact that um, we have a, a, a problem with a virus, a fish virus, a very dangerous one that's invaded the Great Lakes and we don't want it spreading. And one of the practices that used to happen is people used to catch minnows, bait fish, and sell them as minnows throughout the province. And we've uh, now banned that. We said you can't you can sell trap minnows in Great Lakes and sell them in the Great Lakes, but you can't move them throughout the province. But who, who regulates that? Who enforces that? Conservation officers. So, see a little, there's other jobs they don't do. So one might think, well, uh, their job, the number of things they have to do is expanding. So have the numbers of conservation officers kept pace with the expanding role? Well, no. Uh, well, have they stayed the same? Same numbers in recent years? And the answer to that is no. In fact, uh, over the last 14 years, despite the fact that their responsibilities have increased, there are 20% fewer conservation officers in the province of Ontario than there were 14 years ago. It's just not enough to do the job. Let me, let me give you, you know, illustrate the point with one example. The Great Lakes, so Lake Ontario. Lake Ontario, big place, lots and lots of recreational fishermen. Uh, the Toronto fish markets have to be checked. I think it's something like 75 commercial fishing licenses in Lake Ontario. Those commercial fishermen have to be checked. Uh, the, the beat of the conservation officers for, for Lake Ontario includes the Niagara River and all the way down the St. Lawrence to the Quebec border. Very, very large area. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of places where people fish and, and are, are potentially violating the laws. Uh, and the, the whole complement of conservation officers in that area is two. Two people are supposed to enforce uh, all the game fish laws and all the other laws in that vast area. And it's just, it's just not enough. Uh, this has been noticed. Other, it's interesting that uh, it's not just ourselves that have noticed that there's this lack of capacity and causing problems. The, the uh, Game and Fish Associations have, have raised this as a public concern, and so has the union uh, of, of the uh, Public Sector Employees Union has, has raised and noted that the lack of conservation officers is, is, is a big problem. So uh, it's widely recognized that there aren't enough people protecting our natural heritage. And it's not a big factor, it's not a big cost in the scheme of things in Ontario. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, there's no excuse for us uh, not investing in the kind of, uh, in the capacity, the kind of, of, of people uh, and with the expertise to protect our natural heritage for future generations. It's just something we should be doing.